Okay, looks like the numbers are slowing down a little bit, which is a, a good thing and an exciting thing. Um, we're going to get started here. So hello and welcome to the live Q&A fundraising during COVID-19 presented by Windfire. My name is Jason Champion. I am the Director of Product Development and I am joined today by Mr. Cristo, Director of Growth Marketing at Windspire, Kevin Spikerman, Director of Fundraising at Windspire, Bobby B. Elhart of Inspired Hearts Fundraising and Virtual Event Strategist. Um, so a couple of little things that I wanted to talk about first was as this COVID-19 situation continues to develop, we want to assure you that Windspire is open for business and well positioned to navigate through the challenging times. We are well staffed and ready to support you and your donor. We all know fundraising can be very challenging, especially in time of crisis with downturn. But everyone watching right now, I want you to hear this very loud and clear. This group of people will rally and change the world. We are some of the most resilient people. And why? Because we operate with high levels of integrity and we care for our fellow humans. We live our lives with kindness and compassion. Because kindness is a wonderful way to let the world know that there is still love. To any organization out there currently supporting our front line of healthcare workers, keep up with your job. Thank you so much. It is well deserved that you're getting them. Thank you. A um, couple of little housekeeping items. Um, I will read the questions aloud and give each panelist 30 to 45 seconds to answer. We will get through as many as possible for the next 30 to 45 minutes. And of course, if we can't get to your questions, our emails and phone numbers will be posted in the recording with a follow-up email. Please feel free to reach out. Thank you to all those who submitted questions prior. We have compiled those and will answer questions as a group. To join the conversation, click the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen to submit your question. There's some great ones coming in already, so we're definitely going to be able to get to that. Feel free to use the chat tab to communicate to the entire group, share success stories, and make connections. We will compile those as well and send them out along with the report. So let's get into this. We already have some great questions coming in, but first, let's start with Bobby D and tap into his knowledge of virtual fundraising. So Bobby, I'm going to let you take it away for a couple of minutes. Hey, Bobby, I think you might be muted. Oh, there we go. Uh, there hey, this, this is only the 100th Zoom call I've had here in the past <laughs> week. Um, well, where I mean, where I came from was 100% in the live event space. You know, I, I am a fundraising auctioneer, a fundraising conductor, a fundraising event strategist. And literally, the rug has been pulled out from underneath my my feet and it's like what 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 now i mean i had over 30 events you know postponed from late march all the way now in the middle of may even some june events are are pushing off so it's like i've had the conversations with my my my, my clients and so many nonprofits that are out there it's like oh my gosh now what what are we going to do in this what we call new normal and and how do we you know how do we continue to have events i mean yes live events are still going to happen but what are we going to do in that time frame i know there's some groups that are out there that need this funding lie on those events to continue to keep the doors open and to have uh, the programs uh, available for, for those, I mean, especially in this day more than ever. So what the evolution is or the reimagine is, and a lot of people are talking about the pivot is, is these virtual event fundraising experiences in which we're, we're trying to create. I mean, if many of us remember back in the days, there was the Jerry Lewis telethon. I mean, it's very similar. I mean, that's one option, but now there is an unlimited amount of, of, of opportunities to create this event experience to engage not only your current donor base, but really cast the net out there globally to bring as many people into this to learn about your organization, to help them uh, make a, a donation to your organization and to be a part of the impact that you have. So I'm very, very excited of what uh, this opportunity holds. And here we are literally week two of, of the future. We are standing here amidst this and it's, uh, it's, it's, I'm inspired to, uh, to think bigger with everyone. And I'm, I'm ha very, very happy to be here with Winspire. Thank you. 
Awesome. Thank you, Bobby. We really appreciate your knowledge and your expertise that you have going right now that has been uh, educated within, like you said, uh, two weeks. And so <laughs> we get really fast and learning things that we may never use again, but it's always good to have. So um, one of the biggest questions that have come in so far was when should we make the call to postpone our event? And so I want to throw this one over to Kevin to start with. So Kevin, I'll let you answer. When do you think your organization should make the call to cancel or postpone? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, every organization is going to be a little bit different. Um, and, you know, Bobby D, you and I, we spoke earlier this week, um, another Zoom chat, um, just about what that looks like. And I really think that, you know, talking to the, the board, the organization, and even their professional uh, support, you know, like, I mean, if I was working with Bobby D, and he was my auctioneer, I'd be talking to him right now saying, Bobby, what would you think we should do? Um, you know, there, you know, it looks like people are, you know, polls are out there that August, September for actual physical events, people are kind of pushing out that far. Um, but as Bobby D said, I mean, people need funding right now. And so what are, what are the choices that they can do? And those virtual events are, are a great way to do it. Online auctions, um, there's a lot of ways that you can still get the word out there without having people in a physical space. So. Um, it really depends on, <clears throat> depends on your needs as an organization. If the needs are, we need funding tomorrow, we can't let our event go <clears throat> another four or five months, then you know what, let's talk to Bobby D and let's talk to, to Winspire and let's, let's set up a virtual auction. Um, <clears throat> if you can push it off and you really wanna have that physical event where people are you know, in a room, you know, <clears throat> August, September, October, I mean, a lot of events I've saw uh, coming in for December, um, just obviously venue space is gonna be an issue for October, November. so. Um, you're really pushing it out to whatever your needs are immediately and addressing those. And if, if you can push it off and you really want to have that physical event, September, October, I mean, Bobby, is that something you would, you would recommend or you, you would be in line with? Absolutely. And, and <laughs> I'm suggesting getting to the pump sooner than later, because what's going to happen as we get into that November, December, uh, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of donor fatigue and a lot of event fatigue uh, that, that, you know, people are just going to be burned out or their mm -hmm. wallets are going to be burnt out. They're, they're not going to be anything left in them. So you, you have to look at of, of how you're going to position mm -hmm. that postponed event, you know, in competition with all of the other mm -hmm. events that are going to be going on. So, so how could you, you know, position yourself within that live event, but then that's where the virtual event can come in and, and fill that gap uh, and add in a additional, you know, form of revenue, but that's really an engagement tool to bring in, you know, more people into your, into your, into your donor database. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. And we just had a, a question come in that, do you feel like that the virtual fundraising is now going to be the wave of the future? Um, I'll say yes to that because now uh, we have a, I mean, there, there was a drastic change that happened two weeks ago, bam. The whole nonprofit fundraising market was just completely shooken, and and what what was you know is no longer going to be. So how do we think bigger than this? How do we evolve rapidly to to you know combat you know what you know what we have? I mean, every person is in their home right now, and every person wants to be a part of something bigger, and they want to be a part of that community. So how can you as the nonprofit reach out and and let them to be a part you know of this? So it's um. It, it, it is. It's really going to change everything from this this point forward. And it's uh, it's exciting. It's scary, but it's really exciting. But what doesn't scare you doesn't have the biggest gains, correct? Like you, you have to be nervous uh, to get the biggest return on what you're trying to do. And right now yep. we are forging a new society within the nonprofit world to be ahead of everything that's out there and do it. Because like I said earlier, we are some of the most resilient people and know how to work with others. So here's another question that just came around virtual fundraising. So is it inappropriate right now to ask for virtual sponsorship and or sell tickets to this event online? No, it's, it's absolutely appropriate because everybody wants, again, to be a part of that community. And if you are evolving your event from being in the fall and now moving it, you know, or sorry, in the spring and into the fall, you probably have already had some event sponsors uh, that were, you know, they were already on board. But now it's having that conversation, continue to steward that relationship and say, we are... We are reimagining your sponsorship involvement, you know, with this. And these are going to be the perks and the benefits that we're going to, you know, provide, you know, when we create, you know, something virtually. And 
start to think about this now this does open it up to a much broader audience and is going to really create uh, more visual opportunities for those sponsors to be you know to be recognized and to be involved uh, with that that event that you have and what used to be a step and repeat or somebody in the program a logo many people really forget them but now we're literally a click away from wherever they you know like whomever that sponsor is so i mean now it's looking at the the engagement you know beyond the event and tracking that there's a lot of geeky things we can really talk about but i think it is it is a, a, a time to strike and to have those deep deep conversations with those sponsors those potential sponsors to show them that this is a a chance to to cast again that wider net yeah, I, mean, I would just I would just add to that real quick, Bobby. Um, you know, we had um, Amy uh, yesterday submit a question from Michigan about a high school scholarship uh, program that you know she's like, I don't know how to ask when you know the city is just getting obliterated. Um, but I think, as you said, but it's also you need to highlight that mission statement again, and you need to get back to why you do what you do, and yeah. you know, make people aren't going to give if they don't care. You know, and I think you know if people understand what your mission is. And the ask might be a little bit different. You may have to, you know, use some examples of, hey, this is the impact that this organization is doing, and we would love for you to be a part of that. You know, so I think if people understand and just get back to that root of this is our mission statement and this is the impact we're having in the community, uh, people will get behind that. Agreed. Yeah. Very well agree. said. Well said. Yep. Uh, Lou, do you have any comments on that? Yeah. So. I worked at a, a nonprofit for about seven years in, in DC and, and something that we would do when we were going through hard times is uh, the founder of the nonprofit would actually write like a heartfelt letter. Um, and we would send that out via email. Uh, he would actually send it out <laughs> via snail mail to some people. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just very personal and heartfelt. And again, like you guys are doing what you do because it's important. So you need to just feel comfortable relaying that to everyone and remind them where their money is going, why it's important, why you do what you do. Um, and I know you're already doing that day by day, right? That's, that's what, of, what you do at a nonprofit, um, but continue to do that. And don't be afraid <laughs> to be fully transparent, right? The need is there, express that need. Yeah, I think that is a, a key message to run into because one of the other questions that have come in yesterday and today that I'm seeing as a, as a normal trend of, is it insensitive um, right now to reach out to your past owners and your communication um, with them? Um, my my answer is simple. It's it is it's not insensitive. It is time to pick up the phone and let's get back to the basics and talking to our people and connecting to our people that have supported us over the years and with all of our organizations that we work with from healthcare to arts to human services, a little bit of everything. I think now is the time that nonprofits open the door, call their donors and be super transparent in what they're asking for and what they need that money for and involve them because your net high net worth donors as well that are in their own communities will be ones that start to help local organizations succeed again so definitely reach out to them throw this question out to bobby first let him do it and then let's go around the horn kevin you can go and then lou cool all right all right so jason clarify for me what are we what do we what do we we tackle in here is is it unsensitive right now to communicate to your donors and ask for money absolutely not uh your donors want to again be a part of something they uh, you know have their own things that are going on in their own lives but how can we reach out into the world but, but better than being a part of a nonprofit that's making you know an impact and yes there are those uh, that are on the front lines of this you know this 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 health crisis that we have that are providing a very vital uh, services and programs uh, that uh, you know definitely do you know need you know funding right now but also, I mean, no matter what it is, whether you're a private school, maybe a humane society, uh, you know, or, or anything, you, you know, you still need that support to, you know, to be a part of that. And every individual has their own affinity to whichever nonprofit they're with. So it's not, it, it's, 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 it's absolutely uh, not uh, how you say um, uh, apropos to, or it is very apropos to continue to keep them engaged, uh, you know, with, with what you're doing and what your need is and, and, and make that ask. Cause it's not what they can give. We, I mean, yes, we want everybody to give a big chunk, 
but it's more important that they give something and be a part of something bigger. Because if we can get, you know, 100,000 people to give us five bucks, I mean, that's a quick way to add up the $500,000. So it, it's, it's, it's really doubling down on people right now and, and engaging as many to be a part of your fundraising at any level. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kevin, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I'm right in line with that. I would say if you look at historically, um, you know, major events within our economy, um, after those events happen, individual giving increases, you know, corporate giving and major, uh, major sponsors might decrease a little bit just because those corporations are, are reeling a little bit, but individual giving has gone up. And so, like Bobby said, you need to look at, you know, 5,000 people or, you know, however many you need to get a, a broader reach and not rely on those one or two organizations or corporations to, you know, to, to be 50 to 60%. But yeah, individual giving increases after mm -hmm. economic uh, events is, is historically what has happened. Yeah. Yeah. And just to, to add on to that and kind of what Bobby said, like, pick up the phone and, and call them. Like everyone's working from home or a lot of people are working from home. A lot of people are just struggling with being in isolation. Like pick up the phone and ask how they're doing. <laughs> I've had phone calls from ex-colleagues and friends and family, people I haven't talked to in a while because people are just kind of checking in on each other um, and it feels good. So I would kind of direct the conversation with like, hey, like, how are you doing? Like, right, we're all, we're all people at the end of the day. Um, so this is a really good chance to continue to build those relationships that you have with your supporters. Awesome. Yeah, thank you guys. I think that is good information to share. Um, so Bobby D, I'm going to throw one question over to you. Uh, and I know you've got to run and jump on others. So this one is going to take you off guard a little bit. It was posted by an anonymous and attendee that says, what is the auctioneer's role in a virtual fundraiser? That is a fantastic question. And I had this conversation with my, my partner last night, um, Aaron. She's an amazing auctioneer. She's been doing this just as long as I've been together. She's the co-founder of Inspire Hearts. And we were watching a virtual gala last night. It was one of our colleagues. He did an amazing job. And, and we started to think about, I mean, nonprofits are going to have this tool at their hand. I mean, they can broadcast everywhere. And it's so important to have whomever that person is that's in front of that camera that is speaking directly to your audience. They need to know your mission. They need to know how to fundraise and they know how, need to know how to be appropriate because all of a sudden you're giving this broadcasting tool and I mean, the guy, but I mean, they have a huge opportunity to Steve Harvey something and all of a sudden now that goes viral and your organization is tied into that. Um, that's not a reputation I want to, I, I want to say, you know, put, uh, you know, put on the line to gamble. So that's where a, your, your professional fundraising auctioneer can play a very pivotal point uh, within that. What I'm trying to do and, and Aaron and I are trying to do with Inspire Hearts is really be the connector of all of these things, you know, with the mobile giving technologies, with the studios, with the AV companies that are truly producing that, um, with you, the consignment companies, you know, which items are appropriate, what other methods, you know, can we utilize to maximize, you know, the fundraising, you know, within, within all of this. So really being that connector point, but then also helping to tell that story to inspire the donors and then make that call to action and keep, keep that, that, that experience engaging, keep it fun, uh, keep it lively because if it's boring, I mean, we're literally like one click away from going click and they're gone forever. So yes, please continue using your fundraising auctioneers. They have so much experience with this. We are having our own conversations on the backside and we're constantly developing best, best practices uh, to make these fundraising experiences to be as efficient and effective um, as possible. So um, I'm, I'm excited for it. I know some of my colleagues are scared uh, for this, but we have to embrace the future. We have to embrace this technology and we have to continue to evolve our mindset and really think outside of this box that's right here. So um, I'm here for a little bit more. So I'm just going to stick around and keep, uh, keep answering as many questions as I can. Okay, cool. Um, and you know, I've known Bobby for a while and I've never seen the man back down from a challenge. So I know that this is one of his shining moments, one to be in front of folks and talk and share the missions of what he's worked with and helped over the years. So we really appreciate your um, pitch in on this and it's it's great. Keep up the good work. Um, we're all we're all fighting for the good out here. Um, Want to shift a little bit to uh, a multiple questions that are coming in in regards to how to sell items 
and what is the best way right now to do that? Um, I'll kick this off because I, I am the one that is uh, not your traditional business thinker. I am creative. Um, I want to share fun things to do uh, with nonprofits that they can work with vendors to continue to secure donations. Is One of the things that we came up with is that reach out to these restaurants and stuff that have uh, donated to you before um, and set times to where if you do have an auction item that you're asking for them, maybe change it around and that you've got a Saturday morning that the restaurant wasn't open, but the chef can cook breakfast for, you know, 10 people to come in socially distanced and sit in the restaurant, but you're obviously bringing business back at vendor. You're helping them continue to support what they're doing and what their passions are. So this is the time to get creative reach out to everything. I saw something really fun on a virtual fundraiser the other night that the fire department was allowing um, uh, someone to come in and they were the firemen were gonna cook for 10 people uh, and they were gonna serve in between all the fire trucks, um, which was just a great way to get people back into bringing in uh, their local communities. Um, question, you know, Lou, how do you see people right now soliciting um, fund donations during this time for their silent live auction? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. And like, I, I understand completely that it's like, you, you may feel somewhat insensitive asking, right, local restaurants for donations or whatever these sponsorship requests are. Uh, but it all goes back to expressing the need that you have as an organization and being transparent. Um, you need to continue to have those conversations just like you would have done in January before everything kind of hit the fan. Um, be transparent. Just my biggest thing is let people know exactly what the need is. Um, one thing, so I worked for a, a nonprofit organization and our mission was to support the safety and success of U.S. troops overseas. Um, so when we were looking for event sponsors or um, anyone to donate some auction items, what we would do is we would let people know, hey, 20 bucks buys uh, two life straws that we could send to our troops in, in Africa or whatever the exact amount was. Um, so they were very clear on what the need was and then what their donation would have an impact on. Um, so I think for a lot of nonprofits, this is going to get you to be a little more transparent maybe than you're being now in terms of what exactly that money is going to have an effect on. Absolutely. Kevin, what do you think? Yeah, I think it goes, um, what I would say is let's, let's go back to that donation request letter that everybody sends, right? It's kind of that one page. Um, I think those need to be rethought. I mean, that is basically your resume that you're sending out, you know, and organizations are going to get a hundred of those. So why is yours going to stand out? Um, you know, it, I think you really need to paint the picture and, and be creative. Um, you know, I mean, I know, Jason, you're one of the most creative people that we, we know around here. And, you know, I'm sure you would have some great ideas of just how to send out a donation request letter and make it stand out. Um, have it grab somebody's attention. Because like I said, hotels get 100 of these a day and they either pass them off or don't even look at them. But what's going to make them stop and look at it and actually read what you're, what you're trying to accomplish? Um, but yeah, rethink those uh, donor request letters because um, that's, again, that's your resume and, and you want people to uh, acknowledge those and pick them up and read them and, and donate. Agreed. And I just want to jump in real quick because Caroline had a great question about being concerned about asking restaurants for donations because a lot of restaurants are struggling right now. Um, something that we've seen on our end is a lot of nonprofits and people in general are really pushing their supporters to order takeout from local restaurants. Um, we all see this big surge in, in supporting local businesses and we should be doing that year round. Um, but that is something that you can do because every nonprofit has a large database of supporters. Um, express to everyone, highlight this restaurant on your Facebook page and on your website, like do what you can to drive business to that restaurant or whatever that local business is. Um, and then right, it, it helps them stay in business, helps people keep their jobs, and then kind of keeps them in your circle too for next year when, when you guys are doing events, they are around and uh, thriving. 
Yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to add one thing to that. Um, an idea, I love the idea with the partnering with your local restaurants uh, is uh, maybe it's just as simple as, as maybe them putting a little, you know, pamphlet or a little, you know, kind of card in all of the takeout orders that go out. I mean, and if you have that relationship with them, like, look here, you know, we're ABC nonprofit, you know, we're happy to partner with XYZ restaurant and, and, you know, and, and, you know, we, we want you to join us, you know, check out our website, look at the impact that we're having, you know, we're in the community and we're providing those services. And, you know, maybe there is an option for a coupon code to come from the restaurants to get out there into the community. And then we can track that and see the involvement, you know, with that. And that's all of us, you know, coming together to really help each other. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Um, Shauna Bear sent in a question. It says, I work with the local performing arts center and we've had to cancel all of our shows through May. We're losing ticket revenue, and they also had to postpone their casino night fundraiser that was scheduled in April. Um, how are they? I'm going to change her question a little bit, and then we're going to part of it. So she wants to know how they need to change their message to their donors. Um, and two, I want to give you a creative idea of something that you can still do. Uh, and gather some revenue from. I'm sure as a, uh, if it's a musical organization or a theater, you have a decent sized parking lot. Let's do a drive up concert. Uh, have 20 cars that come in and pay $5 a piece and you've got a string, string, string quartet with five socially distanced players that you can sit and hear music for an hour. Um, I going to get funny here and get creative. I've got a, a really good friend of mine that lives in Denver that is a female impersonator of drag show and they are doing driveway performance uh, right now. So drive by, watch a number and head on. People are looking for entertainment. So think of getting out of your box of a performance studio to going outside. Um, think about if it's an art museum, have four or five of your beautiful pieces that are some of your most collectibles in a roundabout where people can drive by, have your on staff do docent talk about the pieces as a driver drives up. Um, this is the time to get creative. So, but going back to what she was saying, how do they craft their mission now to, or how do they craft their purpose to helping what they're doing? How do we, how do they ask for that? Yeah, and, and it's it's continually to, you know, evolve this idea and it's, uh, you know, of what used to be the live event. You know, I love, you know, the idea of, of thinking, you know, beyond that, let's get in the cars, let's go, you know, be safe, but let's gather as a community. Um, I mean, creating that, that online virtual experience, you know, I know there's a lot of performing arts groups that are continuing to uh, perform on stage and then, you know, live stream those out. And that's a perfect opportunity. I mean, this is, you know, there's so many platforms that are out there that could live stream. And then there's some technology companies that could put a skin over the top of that live stream. And it's here, click here to donate, click here to give. If you, you know, you like the song, click here, you know, and there's some groups that are doing request, you know, like kind of request, you know, only shows. And I mean, how cool is that? Here we are in the chat, type that in, you know, so it, it's, it's, taking what was and now thinking bigger of what can be. And that's what we're doing here. We're cat gathering so many ideas. I mean, the chat's blowing up, the Q and A's blowing up with so many great you know, ways that we can do this. And, I'm having and a hard keep time it. keeping up with all the questions. <laughs> I know I'm trying to hammer out as many Q and A questions as, as I can. Hey everybody, we're trying to get through them. <laughs> we might have to do a part two. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Um, so, you know, also one of the other big questions, considering that we are a the largest provider of travel nonprofits to help assist in fundraising, um, will people purchase travel in their auctions? Uh, Kevin, I'll let you start with this one. Yeah, so I've uh, had some conversations with some friends of mine, and uh, you know, beyond just fundraising and auctions, they said as soon as this all lifts and they can travel, they're going to book a trip just to support the travel industry. Um, you know, hotels, airlines, things like that are, are needing some help. I mean, a lot of them are closing for a while. So just the general public wants to support the travel industry. So knowing that, you know, tying that into are people going to buy vacations and experiences in their auction? Um, I think if the bidder or the, the potential donor um, has the availability to book within a certain time frame, um, they're going to have that ease of like, I can bid on this. It's going to be a great experience. I want to support the travel industry. I want to support the organization. 
Um, so what we're doing, um, you know, as you said, as the largest consignment travel provider, we are allowing anybody who purchases a trip for the foreseeable future to book or redeem the trip through the end of 2021. So they almost have a year and eight months, a year and nine months to actually call us and redeem their trip. Um, and that's plenty of time. And if they need more time than that, we'll, we'll have a conversation, we could do that. But again, they have that, that peace of mind, knowing that I can buy this, I can go whenever I, whenever I want to, um, but they're supporting an organization, they're also supporting the travel industry, and I think that's a win-win. Yeah, and just remember this as well. Uh, we'll probably all be able to fly first class pretty cheap back and forth to whatever destination <laughs> that you're looking for. So it's you know let's help those that have helped us, um, and we can do that. And so that it's just yeah, cheap airline tickets coming. And I'm getting questions right now specifically because I'm director of product. You know what are we doing to address that crisis? Uh, currently, I am working with almost 200 vendors to secure what we're looking for for the future. Um, we will come out of this steadfast and you know, be stronger and faster and better than we ever were. Um, our businesses that we have supported, our vendors that we have supported um, are gonna support us as well. And we are going to collaborate, come up with some amazing things and get people back out going wine tasting in Napa, going to trouble hunting in Italy, going to Broadway in New York, we are going to help this happen and get back. And so as a front line, we have shifted our uh, communications with them to what are we planning for? How are we planning for the, the surge of what we're gonna get? Um, one other thing is outside of a fund of need in a auction, silent or live, travel are still some of the biggest rewards in using um, right now. So it doesn't matter that you can't travel this moment. That doesn't mean the world is going to stop. We are going to travel. We are going to get out there. And they are some of your biggest revenue items. People know right now they're going to book it when they can book it. And they're fine with that. Um, Bobby, have you seen in some of these virtual events lately any travel that's selling? Yeah, it, it, it's been selling great. I mean, because the world will travel again. And we are all going to need an amazing vacation after this. I mean, <laughs> only two weeks in and I, I can't wait to get out and get my toes in the sand again and get some sunshine on my face or whatever it is going to be. So th that craving uh, is, is, is always there. And we see them are, are, are selling amazingly. They're, you know, they're, the high demand is high. The prices continue to go up. Uh, but I love uh, one thing I, I was, you know, I was talking to, uh, you know, some groups out there and, and Kevin, you know, you were the one that really gave, you know, me this idea to help share with the world is, people are going to want to travel. So why not, you know, travel with a cause and there's their, you know, everybody's got the give, you know, kind of drop down on their website. What if, you know, it's like, you know, travel for us or travel with us and then partnering with Winspire and creating kind of a buy now situation, you know, whatever that price is and give those options out there. People who want to go to Napa, people are going to want to go to Florida. People are going to want to, you know, get out there and experience that. And then just let those, you know, your donors purchase that package and, and Winspire makes it so easy to do that. And that can just live on there all the time because people are gonna want to travel. So let's help them set up their travel and have those best experiences possible. And why not raise some money in, in the meantime? I mean, that's a win, win, win if I've ever seen one. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Uh, Lou, do you got anything you wanna share with that? No, I just, I agree with what everyone said, right? Like we're all, I think, excited for like, human interaction again after just the self-isolation so like i'm supposed to go to a taylor swift concert with my wife in june or july and like like for us like we just got those tickets now because we're trying to just get out of the house as soon as we can um so yeah i agree and just from donors and and nonprofits i've spoken with in the past couple of days people are still buying travel and auction because everyone has the same sentiment they're ready they're they're dreaming right now at home because <laughs> they're trying to figure out what to do next yeah absolutely i must say the the office is a little a little uh little bare i'm waiting for you to come back <laughs> yeah we'll see you soon <laughs> he's only social distancing himself uh he has two young kids at home and didn't want the cnn reporter with the young child coming in the background so we, we sent him to the office which is walking distance so he's good He's good. Yep. Um, he's all safe because there was a comment that everybody was at home except for Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, we are safe. They're safe. Well, good. 
Well, guys, you know, we're approaching 40 minutes. I um, will be, we'll be sending out this recording, of course, um, to everybody and any questions that we didn't get to, we will answer those as quickly as possible and get them out to you guys. But this probably will be a routine thing that we'll start doing these just to check in with everybody. So if you have any last uh, minute sentiments, guys, please share. You can go around the horn. Let's start with you, Luke. Yep. So I'll just kind of fire off a few things that I want to talk about. Um, this is a great time to pull in monthly donations and recurring donors. Um, a lot of people have Hulu, Netflix, all these subscriptions um, for them to, to donate 20, 30, $40 a month. Um, it's really great steady income for the nonprofit. And um, most of the time monthly donors do single donations as well on top of what they're doing monthly. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, if you have a platform to do that uh, on your website, that's great. It makes it easy. Um, so definitely push monthly donors. Um, I see a lot of people getting super creative in the chat. Um, a lot of people talking about using Facebook. We all use Facebook. It's been around. Facebook Live takes 10 seconds to set up. Um, so I love that people are selling tickets um, to a Facebook Live event, right? If, if you don't have the budget to get a big production, just get really creative and use the tools that you have in your tool belt. Um, so I love Facebook Live. Something I've seen some people doing is, is daily Facebook Live briefings as a nonprofit. So you can turn on Facebook Live, do a state of the state, just get on there, talk about where you guys are at, um, let people know, hey, we're losing out on money because our event's canceled and um, we have less dogs in our shelter now and less food, like whatever it is that you guys are, are feeling, like put that out and broadcast it, let the world know. Um, and, uh, yeah, other than that, all season this time to just build relationships with those that have been supporting you because um, everyone could use a phone call <laughs> during these times. <laughs> yep, exactly. Kevin? Yeah, I would say just, you know, your vision and your goal should not change. Um, your vision and your goal and what you guys have established as this is where the organization is going, that can't change. But I think how you get there, you need to hold really, really loosely. And so the vision doesn't change, but the how we hold that super loosely. And so the how and how we're gonna get there, uh, we gotta pivot. And like Bobby D said, virtual galas a month ago were something that maybe somebody mentioned a while, you know, it wasn't a thing. Um, I think you really need to, again, keep the vision and the goals the same, but you know, just hold the how very loosely and be very adaptive and you know, still have that vision and goal, like that is where you're going and that's where you're going to get. Um, but you just gotta get creative and have these types of conversations and and reach out to uh, other experts in the field uh, for help. So um, we will all get to our vision and our goals. It's just going to look a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby? And, and many people, especially in the Q&A, are asking about giving at this time or asking people to give at this time, especially with that, that financial instability. What we're doing, what we're talking about with these virtual events is creating a chance for people to engage with something bigger, to be a part of the community to be a part of a solution uh, to, to something that, that, they, you know, that they absolutely love. So don't be afraid to ask. Yes, you need to be sensitive, but really put that impact out there. Put you know, your mission forward and, and get out there and, and make, those, you know, make those, those connections. People want to want to feel connected, and this is a, a great way and a great technology um, that, we, that we do have. Um, another thing I just want to put in is 44% of nonprofits don't have a backup plan. Uh, if, if their main fundraising source goes out. So for groups that are thinking about having those events in late May or June or July, and this continues to extend, build a backup plan. Um, and that's why we're having these conversations with so many groups about virtual event fundraising experiences is to create a backup plan, but also to create an additional stream of revenue. Uh, yes, raising dollars, but but raising relationships is, is way more important than that. And, and creating a valuable content, engaging content, people that are excited about, uh, that that's going to be your best bet to create a plan B, or maybe that could even be your plan A. So that's uh, the I, I, nonprofits, what you do matters and you can do this. I know you're going to, you're going to make it happen. Yep. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for your time. Really appreciate your expertise that you're able to share with us. And you know what? $50 is $50. Get out there, shake the bushes. Let's make this happen and start connecting with your donors back on the basic level of communication. Let's get there. One last thing, Jason, before I just want to let everyone know if 
take whatever you're doing on social media right now and, and times it by two. Um, now is the time to, to be out there and um, you might feel like you're over communicating, right? I'm not saying take your ask and times it by two, but just make sure you're out there communicating with, with your supporters more than you've ever done before. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Lou. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Kevin. Um, keep up the good work that you guys have. Stay tuned to us. We will keep as much information coming to you as our customers as much as we can. Um, always feel free to reach out to us at any point in time, winspireme.com. Uh, our phone numbers and email addresses will be in the recording. So we look forward to getting through this, being successful, the most resilient, and let's go tackle this world. Stay strong. Yep. Thanks everybody for having me. You can do this. Aspire to yep. inspire. Woo. Do it. Take care. Bye-bye.